morning. How was the coffee? It's good. I'm gonna hit HIF4 carburetor from my 74 MGB. Uh, did one last weekend. Uh, Kyle was busy, didn't get that one, and uh, almost missed half of this one. So at this point, I've got it completely disassembled. Uh, I've cleaned up uh, a majority of the parts, uh, soaked them in carburetor cleaner and lacquer thinner, that type of stuff. Uh, there was a lot of old varnished fuel inside uh, the carburetor. Uh, and so at this point I'm going to get my overhaul kits and uh, begin to put this thing back together. The, you know, the carburetor body uh, basically would set like that. This is the float chamber. Uh, needle valve and seat sits in there. Uh, the jet sits here. Um, this upper part is for the suction chamber. The suction chamber uh, goes up in there like that and moves up and down and this needle is attached and it uh, slides up and down in the in the uh, jet to provide a, a variable fuel mixture uh, depending on how much vacuum the engine is creating um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell uh, this is the float over here these are parts that I'll be discarding uh, the old jet uh, seals and uh, the needle needle valve and seat. Uh, bimetallic uh, spring that as it increases or de decreases in temperature it uh, flexes and it actually can move the jet up and down and it's uh, as it goes up and down it'll be obviously very minor changes but that's a temperature compensator. Uh, some of these gummy parts. Throw that back so that's, that's lacquer cleaner in there? That's just lacquer thinner, yeah. It tends to cut the varnished uh, fuel uh, pretty well. Where where do you buy that? Uh, I, I think you can get it at most any hardware store. Uh, this may have come from uh, Walmart or something like that even. So, so everybody has it, okay. Yeah, pretty readily available and not, not terribly expensive. It's a good all-around cleaner. So, okay, just dump the contents of my overhaul kit out here on the shelf. These I'll need later when I'm actually mounting the uh, carburetors. Uh, so we have a brand new needle jet. Uh, this doesn't get used. Jet and needle and then some seals. This is the base seal for there. This is for the part that's in soaking right now. And can't remember exactly where these go right now, but we'll find them as we go. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is that the kit does come with a new Viton uh, tipped needle and seat. And basically what happens is the float lever here as the float, uh, as the float comes up, this lever pushes on that dot and pushes that pointed needle up against a pointed seat on the inside and that shuts off the fuel flow when it's reached the proper level. Um, a few years ago I understood that there was a company called Gross that built a ball type valve that was better and so I did actually purchase those for these particular set of carburetors uh, after doing some research and reading, it sounds like the gross jets are not as good as they once were. However, I'm going to go ahead and give them a chance, and I guess if they give me trouble, I'll pull them out and I'll have these uh, Viton tipped ones to go in there. Um, these are actually pretty nice uh, needle valve and seat. It's brass all the way. The ones that came out of the carburetor were brass and then plastic with a bit of a... I don't know if that's a Viton tip. No, I think it's a brass tip, so... Um, so that'll be replaced with with this assembly. Put the needle 
needle and seat down in there first since it's the lowest uh, item in there. I'm going to go ahead and take that out of the protective packaging and get its little paper o-ring. Throw my garbage away here. So basically, and that threads just right into that hole next to where the needle would go. I'm going to bring that down snug. Get my socket. And just snug that. Now to test uh, how that works, I can plug the interconnect for the two carburetors, blow into where the fuel would be coming in, and as I push down on on the needle ball, it shuts off the flow, which actually, this is upside down on my hand now, it'll be like this, and as the float floats up, it will uh, shut that off. So we'll we'll check that in a little bit, I'll show you how to check the float, float height. Uh, um, well, this is where the jet protrudes into the uh, into the body and we'll do we'll adjust it so that it's flush to right there is where it's going to eventually uh, be our starting point for the tuning so but I'm going to go ahead and snug up that socket or the uh, the nut the jet adjusting nut and I'm just going to snug that and I'm going to go ahead and drop that jet down in there like we talked about and then next comes our bimetallic uh, temperature compensator. I just want to make sure that it's good and clean before we go together with it. And you can see it has a, a keyhole shaped cutout and that fits over the head of the of the jet. So actually uh, snaps in there like that and then as I say you know that compensates up and down uh, to adjust the mixture for different temperatures and that goes right to there and then that gets this spring spring loaded pivot screw and just cleaning up a little of the extra paint varnish that has dried after uh, being soaked Comes off nice after being in that lacquer thinner. Alright, and that's going to go right there. Now, as you saw, as I'm tightening that down, you can see that it moves the jet up and down. And then the uh, adjusting screw um, goes in here. This would be your mixture adjustment screw. And that thread's in there. It's going to need an O-ring around it, but I'm just going to show you right now how that works. Uh, once again, if I can get some light down in there. Basically, as that's screwed in, it touches the lower part of this arm and as you can see as I move it in and out with the screwdriver here you can see how the jet moves up and down with the uh, and that's how you with the uh, temperature compensator so that's how you set your initial uh, mixture adjustment and how you'd adjust it in in service and basically what it does is it screws through the side of the carburetor and it catches this lower arm of the temperature compensator and of course the head is trapped there of the jet but if I move with the uh, screwdriver here you can see how it moves the jet up and down and basically the jet has a venturi in it that this needle rides in and so as the needle's going one way and the uh, jet is dropping another way it uh, gives it a different mixture for different uh, circumstances like when it's idling so basically like we talked about I'll adjust that now you can see that I have it uh, way too high uh, because you want this flush with the bottom of the uh, deal and as I back it out yeah.
wanted to go back that much. So basically I've got that so that it's pushing in on the lower arm and we're basically uh, perfectly flush in here and actually that's probably a little rich I still want to come uh, in a little bit further and I'll show you why that is uh, it should be flush with the bottom of the recess so basically uh, in in operation as you have fuel being drawn from the float bowl It'll actually puddle in that little recess there, and that's what gives you your idle uh, speed as the fuel or air mixture sucks that puddled fuel uh, into the intakes, and that gives it a, a mixture that it can run on. So back up to this side. Um, basically, we're uh, all done on that side except for mounting the float, so we'll go ahead and do that next. Uh, I'm going to give it a quick wipe. It's got a little bit of stickiness on it. Uh, don't want to get too carried away with that. So I'm going to push that down until I can find the hole on the other side there. Ah, there it goes. And then I'm just going to snug that up very gently. Good. Now, the float uh, moves freely and that's important. So when it's down like this, uh, you have fuel that's flowing up through the jet basically once again like we'd done earlier if I uh, block off uh, the carry through and blow in here you can see that fuel would be moving if I push up on the float like if it were getting fuel in the bottom bowl it shuts the fuel off and tastes oh so good <laughs> so basically in a nutshell that is the uh, the float chamber uh, it gets a seal and uh, the base cover. I'm not going to put that on right now, but just to kind of give you an idea that that all when you rides the, in there. When you put the rubber on there, do you oil it, or is it a good idea or a bad idea? Well, I've seen different uh, things. I think with fuel O-rings, I have no problem putting them in. Uh, in this particular case where it's just a clamp up uh, and you don't have to roll it over anything or it doesn't need to be lubricated, but... You know, they make special O-lubes. Uh, Parker makes an O-lube. I like Dow 4 uh, a lot of times if I'm doing O-rings. But in this particular case where it's just a static seal and doesn't have a part moving, um, yeah, I'll just put that in dry. So basically the, uh, the float chamber is done. And now I've got to clean up just a little bit here on the uh, uh, needle and seat. The jet needle, metering needle. It's so basically... There's the new metering needle. This is the spring. This is what they call a free-floating needle, and this spring helps to bias uh, the needle in one side of the jet or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and get that spring to set on there, and there it goes. And then basically make sure that this is clean. That slides up over the jet. And then the opening goes towards the screw. So I will push that in until it's flush. And I'll have to use a little something to push down on it. But I'm going to go ahead and get the, the set screw started. And what will happen is when it's done, that needle will have some free play. Yeah, let me get that pushed down. I'll show you when I'm done snugging it. Okay, basically I brought everything flush uh, or close to flush there. The needle still has some play, but yet it's uh, connected.